Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips and on the bench today we have a President Ronald which is very similar to the Superstar 3900F and all those with the built-in frequency counter and what have you. But before we start, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, join Facebook, join Patreon, buy me a coffee, have a look on my website microchips.net and let's get started. So I bought this radio as faulty. You may have seen it on eBay a while ago and it's supposed to have a volume fault on it. So I thought, okay, that's fair enough. So I managed to get the seller down a little bit more from what his asking price was. And yeah, so here it is. So I'm hoping we've actually got a nice fault to deal with. So the fault that was listed, it was supposed to have a volume fault on it, which I thought was quite bizarre but you know anyway i've got the lid off everything looks nice inside there that big frequency counter module in there and there's a board down by the microphone socket i'm not sure what that's all about if somebody knows what that board is let me know in the comments nice um dual output final so this thing should make some nice power Having a look on the print side, and yeah, there's some um, telltale signs that somebody's been in there before. We've got some, what's like some trace repairs going on at the front there. And we've got the, the usual burnt track. Which always seems to happen. But apart from that, everything looks fine. There's that dual output. So this should make a nice a nice power on this. Got the correct plastic screw in the side of the frequency counter. So it's supposed to have a volume fault and nothing no fault the volumes working just fine frequency counters working just fine okay so we don't seem to have a fault Which is good because it means we've got the radio a bit cheaper. So I'm happy with that, but not happy we've not got a fault to play with. Anyway, let's do some tests, see whether there's any, any other fault that's hidden. So hit TX is quite nicely. As you can see, we've got a nice, nice 10 watts um, FM there. Well, near enough 10 watts. Pop it onto sideband. Yeah, that's good. It's nice and healthy. Peaking up to 40 watts there. Okay, that's good. Not too bad at all. So we've got the frequency counter module out. I'm just having a look inside and FM deviation has been cranked up. So we will back that off just a little bit. Doesn't need to be cranked up that hard. And going off the last video, on this frequency counter module we've decided to have a look inside this and it has been partially recapped but there's still some of that corrosive glue actually before it's got corrosive on this there's still some remains of it in there but we're going to do like we did on the last video and we're going to recap it and put in the um put in the wine modification 
So having a look at the back, no horror stories there. Everything looks just fine. I don't know why they bother putting marker over the the chip numbers when you can go to the service manual. You can see this glue has started to do its stuff, should we say. So the glue's kind of crusty and, yeah, it needed to come out. And for a, the price of a few capacitors, just like so. Beautiful, that'll last. Yeah, I'll be fine now. I'm almost tempted to move the regulator as well and put it on a proper heat sink, but... So our frequency counter still works, absolutely fine. There wasn't a fault with the frequency counter on this, but we just did the, the caps just as a preventative measure. So what we're going to do with this, seeing it's a Driftomatic 3900, we're going to fit a module in here, which will be the TCXO module, which will replace the 14460 crystal. So we took those cans out and we've injected the signal into there, which seems to be a common point for the signal after the tuning cans. And we've mounted our module on a bracket on the side of the frequency counter. Just trying to keep the signal wire as short as possible from the output of the, the DDS unit. We just need to find USB and LSB. Because our board needs USB, needs to know USB and LSB for the offsets. So, as you might have noticed, the end band is now high band, which isn't right for this radio. It's because it's programmed for a standard 3900. So let's have a look at my programming. So I've got the, the board hooked up via serial. I've got serial enabled. And you can see the debug information that I have coming out of the board, which basically tells us frequency and offsets. But what we can do is on the fly change the crystal, or should we say change the frequency of the crystal. And as you can see by just changing the pre-programmed crystals, you can mess about with the frequency on the radio. So that's how easy it is to shift frequencies around. Just bear in mind this is only for my testing when these boards are sold they have the um, the presets on the bottom, which are pro uh, selectable via solder links. This is just an easy way of checking the board works without physically having to do solder links. You can see we can program the radio completely differently. So what I wanna do is I wanna move this one up so it goes into 10 meters. So I've done that and we're just having a look at the VCO. Just making sure we've got VCO lock all over the place. So we just need to move the VCO up a little bit because this radio was down on 25 and a half and now we're moving it up to up to 28 so we'll keep it as mid high and then the rest will be into the 10 meter band and all this is been um, achievable just by changing the onboard crystal frequencies or should we say the DDS frequencies so we're checking the 692 and 695 Everything's fine there. 
And there we have it. There's our President Ronald put together after a nice clean up. And yeah, I'm quite happy with it. So I'll put it on test for a bit. And hopefully no more fault, but yeah. The uh, TCXO board makes these things nice and stable, so there's going to be no problem with that. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this short video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, join Facebook, join Patreon, buy me coffee, have a look at my website, microchips.net. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode.